Hello and welcome to NTD News Today. Kevin Hogan here. Let's take a look at our top stories. Famous Cuban musicians who usually avoid politics are now voicing public support for protesters. What do they have to say and what song is giving hope to people in Cuba? A group investigating the 2020 election in Georgia says they've found massive errors and provable fraud in Fulton County. We'll bring you the details on that and an update on the Maricopa County Forensic Audit. A former U.S. diplomat says there are signs the Chinese Communist regime is on its last legs. We bring you more from the ambassador and former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And a top spy master in Britain issues warnings from espionage about espionage from Russia, China and Iran, saying the focus should shift from counterterrorism back to counterintelligence. This comes nearly two decades after the 9-11 attacks. Once hesitant, Cuban music stars are now raising their voices in support of protesters. They're even criticizing Cuba's communist regime and its handling of the protests. NTD's Jessica Beatty has more. Famous musicians in Cuba offering rare public support to protesters. They usually avoid politics, but Sunday's protest has changed that. Musician Leonie Torres says Cubans want to choose their own president. We want a better Cuba for everyone. We want a free Cuba, free from injustice for all Cubans. We are here in Havana and we have suffered from what has been happening. We want to choose our president. Actress Juliette Cruz says the repression must end. They cannot keep on silencing those who speak firing from their jobs, censoring artists who speak, taking them off the television, the radio. It's hard. Earlier this year, several Cuban musicians in the U.S. released the anthem Patria y Vida that went viral. It means homeland and life. It's a play on the long-standing communist slogan, Homeland or Death. The song Patria y Vida for the Cuban people has meant freedom, that we need help, lots of support. SOS Cuba, and that everything will be all right. The song was a catchphrase in Cuba Sunday, along with freedom and down with communism. And the White House press secretary said Wednesday they'll take the protests into account when reviewing U.S. policy towards Cuba. And the, it was the largest protest we've seen in Cuba in a long time. That will obviously have an impact on how we proceed. So we will see how things develop in the days ahead and develop our policy responses accordingly. And the head of the U.S. Agency for International Development was also asked about the protests during a Senate committee hearing. What are the protesters in Cuba seeking and what are the impediments to their getting it? You only have to hear the the cries on the street. People don't want to be repressed and they want to enjoy individual dignity. And the regime denies them that. And people outside of Cuba are also marching in solidarity with the protesters. With rally goers in Madrid and Miami still showing their support for the people of Cuba on Wednesday. Jessica Beatty, NTD News. The former U.S. ambassador for international religious freedom says the Chinese Communist Party is in its waning days. He says that because of the CCP's increased harshness and brutality, as well as its pervasive high-tech surveillance. The International Religious Freedom, or IRF, summit took place in Washington on Wednesday. There, former American IRF ambassador Sam Brownback told the Epoch Times that Beijing is showing a sign of weakness with its war on faith. He says the Chinese regime is on its last legs because it's become more brutal instead of more liberating and that it's using bullying tactics rather than cooperation. Brownback says the most abused human right in the world today is the freedom of religion. We need to reach out to governments and cultures alike and say that freedom of faith is the way forward. If we don't have religious freedom for all around the world, we will have the clash of civilizations full of death and carnage. And you can see it setting up now. The ambassador said that countries once looked away from Beijing's human rights abuses for fear of offending the regime, but now they're starting to speak out. What's more, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo questions Biden's priorities with respect to China. To date, the current administration indicated its central focus with respect to China and indeed the rest of the world may well be in something like climate change, relegating religious liberty to a side issue. This is unfortunate. In my view, it is foolish. 
and it would be a grave mistake to prioritize climate change at the expense of allowing religious oppression to fester and grow throughout the world. The Biden administration did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Another speaker at the summit was Republican Representative Chris Smith of New Jersey. He says the current CCP leadership is persecuting religious believers at a rate not seen since about 50 years ago. As I think many of you know, Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party have exponentially increased persecution against religious believers, including Christians. I want to do a shout out to Bob Fu, Pastor Bob Fu, for the great work that he has done. But they're also persecuting Muslims, Tibetan Buddhists, ongoing and Falun Gong practitioners in ways not seen since Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution. The regime's persecution of Falun Gong practitioners started on July 20th, 1999, and just ahead of the 22nd anniversary, Brownback gave the following message to adherents of the spiritual practice. Don't give up the fight. The Director General of Britain's Security Service, also known as MI5, is warning about espionage from Russia, China, and Iran. It marks a transition from the agency's focus back from counterterrorism following the 9-11 attacks. Here's more. Tackling terrorism has been the priority for Western intelligence agencies since the 9-11 attacks on the United States. But now, the counterterrorism force may need to transition to counter-espionage or tracking foreign spies. Britain's top spymaster cautioned citizens on Wednesday, saying the threat of spying from Russia, China and Iran should be treated with as much vigilance as terrorism. The activity MI5 encounters day by day comes predominantly in quite varying ways from state or state-backed organizations in Russia, China and Iran. Director General Ken McCallum made the speech in London, the headquarters of Britain's security service MI5. In 2018, a nerve agent attack struck in England, targeting a former Russian double agent. Since then, MI5 has disrupted hostile power activity that might have resulted in an attempted killing. As a nerve agent attack in Salisbury shows, some hostile actors are prepared to come here to kill. Others are more cautious and seek to lure or coerce individuals to travel out from the UK to other countries where they can be detained or abducted or harmed. McCallum explained MI5's biggest job is still tackling terrorism. He also cautioned against the dangers from Syria and Afghanistan, but said attention should focus on state actors. British spies say China and Russia have sought to steal commercially sensitive data and intellectual property, and have tried to interfere in domestic politics by sowing misinformation. Deaths from drug overdoses surged almost 30 percent to a new record high in 2020. Fentanyl and other opioids contributed about 75 percent of those deaths. NTD's Colin Fredrickson has the story. According to the CDC, almost 95,000 Americans died from drug overdoses in 2020. That's the highest number of overdose deaths ever recorded in a single year. Many experts blame the pandemic's stay-at-home orders for the record numbers. The director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse calls the deaths chilling. She says the pandemic created a devastating collision of health crises in America. Recovered drug addict Armin Medella says his relapse started with alcohol after he lost his job and was stuck at home all the time from lockdowns. And he's not surprised by the increase in overdose deaths. In the last few months alone, I've kn- I personally know at least like seven or eight people who have passed away from fentanyl overdose. Medella heard similar stories from other recovering addicts about how isolation led to their relapse. Uh, people were stuck on their own in their houses. They, you know, they didn't have any sort of fellowship activity or any way to get out and, you know, do things for themselves. He says his parents helped him get into a detox center and then he got into a recovery program. After seven months of intensive work and sober living, he graduated from Shoreline Recovery Center. And upon graduation, Shoreline offered me a job as a house manager and... You know, that was really exciting for me. A study published last month found that lockdowns didn't save lives, partly because of higher overdose deaths. Michelle Hallbrook lost her son to an overdose last year. She tells the Epoch Times she's upset officials deemed liquor stores essential businesses, but closed in-person sobriety meetings. And some experts worry that even more fentanyl is getting smuggled into the country this year because of the border crisis. Colin Fredrickson. NTD News. 
Officials in Colombia announced that they seized 5.4 tons of cocaine in a single bust on Wednesday. They put the value of the seized drugs at $185 million. The seizure happened with assistance from the U.S. and Panama. The drugs belonged to the Clan del Golfo criminal gang, led by Colombia's most wanted drug trafficker. Colombia's security forces seized 505 tons of cocaine in 2020 and destroyed over 300,000 acres of coca plants. Earlier this week, Colombia's defense ministry reported that five members of Clan del Golfo were killed in a military operation, including a regional leader, and another five were captured. Despite decades of fighting drug trafficking and assistance from the U.S., Colombia remains one of the top producers of cocaine in the world. A group investigating the 2020 election in Georgia says it has found errors and fraud in Fulton County. Now, House Democrats will probe one of the firms conducting the forensic election audit in Maricopa County, Arizona. NTD's Colin Fredrickson has the story. A voting integrity group says they've uncovered massive errors and provable fraud in the recount of the 2020 election in Georgia's Fulton County. The team says they found seven audit tally sheets with what they believe are falsified totals, each with 100 percent of the votes going for Joe Biden. They say there are 36 batches of mail-in ballots containing over 4,200 votes that were counted more than once. Almost 3,400 of those were for Biden. And 60 percent of batches of mail-in ballots had different totals than official county results. Former President Trump released a statement about the investigation Tuesday. He says the news coming out of Georgia is beyond incredible. The hand recount in Fulton County was a total fraud. They stuffed the ballot box and got caught. Fulton County Commission Chairman Rob Pitts says allegations of voter fraud are unfounded and the claims are part of a dangerous conspiracy theory. Congressional Democrats are now launching a probe into Cyber Ninjas, one of the firms conducting the audit in Maricopa County, Arizona. They are concerned that the firm may be trying to reverse the results of the election, and they're asking for documents on how the audit is being funded and on any communication with Trump or his allies. The Maricopa County Board of Supervisors is purchasing new voting equipment from Dominion. They say they will no longer use the machines examined by the auditors because they may have been compromised. Arizona Senate President Karen Fan asks how they can certify the machines in the first place if they can't determine if they are working properly or have been tampered with. Fan says the hand recount produced a different number of total ballots than the official results. The Arizona Senate will get a progress update from the auditors Thursday. Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. About 4 million taxpayers can expect to get refunds from the Internal Revenue Service this week. That money will be sent to people who paid too much on unemployment compensation last year. The American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 excluded more than $10,000 of that benefit, but the law was passed after much of that money was already paid to the IRS. The government began refunding it to some taxpayers in May. The newest round of refund payments are scheduled to go out as direct deposits starting Wednesday, and paper checks will go out starting Friday for taxpayers who receive refunds that way. The average refund amount for overpayment is $1,265. That number varies based on a number of factors. And just ahead, North Carolina Republicans seek to pass a bill to counter the spread of critical race theory. The bill's sponsor wants to prevent indoctrination of the state's students. And a group of two dozen goats arrive in New York City's Riverside Park to munch on invasive weed species. The animals are already receiving a warm welcome from spectators. All that and more here on NTD News. The North Carolina GOP state Senate leader said his chamber is taking action against critical race theory. He says the bill is meant to counter indoctrinating students. So if uh, they're not indoctrinating uh, students, then uh, they, there should be no concern uh, about the bill as drafted because uh, what the bill, uh, all the bill prohibits is that indoctrination. I believe that uh, because of the public concern that's out there, because of the uh, concern that's been expressed uh, at school board meetings uh, all over, 
uh, the uh, the need for the bill is uh, is there uh, just to, uh, if only, to calm the waters, and we don't want uh, to uh, to indoctrinate uh, folks in what I think is the core of critical race theory, uh, which which is that uh, race is determinative of whether or not it, uh, someone is going to be successful or not. That race is determinative uh, of uh, all manner of things that happen uh, in society. Um, and that past discrimination uh, it justifies current discrimination. The latest version of the North Carolina bill would prevent teachers from compelling students to personally adopt any ideas from a list of 13 beliefs common in critical race theory discussions. The state serves about 1.5 million K-12 public school students, Republicans across the country seek to counter the spread of critical race theory through the nation's educational institutions. A lightning strike has completely destroyed a mural of George Floyd in Toledo, Ohio. The freak occurrence happened Tuesday afternoon during a storm. NTD's Grace Coulter has the story. This mural in memory of George Floyd was painted by Ohio artist David Ross almost exactly one year ago. Now, as seen in this video, it's been reduced to rubble by a lightning strike. Witnesses told Toledo police that a lightning strike hit the mural during a storm Tuesday afternoon, destroying it. Doppler radar backs up the claim, showing that a strike hit around 4.30 p.m. near where the mural was painted. As seen in these images, the brick around and behind Floyd's face is still standing. One city building inspector said the collapse could have been caused by old age and deterioration. He added that inspectors recently found a bow in the middle of the wall. The Toledo Fire and Rescue Department, however, officially filed the cause as a lightning strike. Numerous social media users have reacted to the news by interpreting the lightning strike as symbolic or a divine message, with some saying they thought the mural was struck down because Floyd's name and image has been used for political purposes. However, some users called this interpretation superstitious. Several Toledo residents expressed sadness over the loss of the mural to local news networks, saying the mural meant something to them personally. City officials say they will work with the Arts Commission on planning a new mural, adding they were heartbroken to see the artist's work collapse. Grace Coulter, NTD News. 135 years after the Statue of Liberty was formally unveiled in New York Harbor, Her little sister has taken up residence in front of the French ambassador's home in Washington, D.C. It comes as France celebrates Bastille Day. The French ambassador called it a strong reminder of the friendship between the French people and the American people. The miniature Lady Liberty was unveiled in a ceremony with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and France's foreign minister on Wednesday. It's an exact replica of the original, but it's one-sixteenth the size. It was displayed at the National Museum of Arts and Crafts in Paris for a decade before its journey to the U.S. The statue will remain at the French Embassy for 10 years. A trip of goats has arrived in New York's Riverside Park to help eradicate invasive weeds in the area and enjoy some tasty greens along the way. NTD's Andrew Thomas has the story. Two dozen goats from Green Goats Farm in Rhinebeck, New York, traveled to Riverside Park in Manhattan on Wednesday. Their mission? To munch on invasive weeds. As part of our woodland restoration initiative two years ago, we unleashed a very hungry group of goats into a stretch of the park that had been overrun with invasive plants. And wow, did they exceed expectations. We called it Gotham. It's an environmentally friendly win-win for invasive species removal at Riverside Park. The goats get to feast on overgrown weeds, and Riverside Park Conservancy doesn't have to dump harsh chemicals. Since goats are naturally effective weed whackers, putting them to work in Gotham is like treating them to an all-you-can-eat buffet. It's healthy for the goats, and it's good for the environment. That's farm to table. Goats are an ingenious approach to weed removal, harnessing the goats' natural hunger for leafy greens. They even eat species harmful to humans, like poison ivy. They're just a really nice, kind animal, and they they really don't do much but take care of things for you. And then they give us this great goat cheese. Little Chev is always good. Of the 24 goats, five will call Riverside Park their home through the end of August. Buckles, Chalupa, Malamar, Miss Bo Peep, and Skittles will stay, eating their way through two acres of the park. 
on top of how cute they are, I guess, not, not only can they eat like a lot of their body weight, but they'll actually neutralize the seed so they won't get replanted next year. And you know, they, they'll work longer days than any uh, landscapers. The public will be able to vote for their favorite goat to be crowned the greatest of all time. The winner will be announced by the end of the summer. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. Up next, former NFL star Richard Sherman is arrested after crashing his SUV into a construction site and then trying to break into the house of his in-laws. And some residents in California are facing challenges in their daily routines. Severe drought means well water has run dry, forcing locals to get creative amid the extreme heat. Stay tuned to find out more. Hi folks, Joe Namath here, and if you're on Medicare, this is important. You're now entitled to eliminate co-pays and get dental care, dentures, eyeglasses, prescription coverage, in-home aids, unlimited transportation, and home-delivered meals, all at no additional cost. Plus, your zip code may have coverage with the Give Back benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every month. I call to get dental, transportation, meals, and the gift back benefit. With this virus situation, I call to get everything I'm entitled to. I couldn't believe I was missing out on so many benefits. With the uncertainty of the virus, you need to get everything you're entitled to. Millions of people have trusted the Medicare coverage helpline. You can too. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-764-1930. That's 1-800-764-1930 now. Peace comes from within. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The human body is the temple of God, and religion is the experience of God within yourself. Are you ready to discover the truth within yourself? Book an appointment now at divinelight.com. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. <sighs> Dad? Are you okay? Finder. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Johnson & Johnson has issued a recall for certain aerosol sunscreen products. The company says that some samples of the products contain low levels of benzene, a chemical compound classified as a human carcinogen. In a press release, Johnson & Johnson says it is voluntarily pulling the sunscreen out of an abundance of caution and notes consumers should stop using them. The impacted products include Neutrogena Cool Dry Sport Aerosol Sunscreen, Aveeno Protect and Refresh Aerosol Sunscreen, and Neutrogena Beach Defense Aerosol Sunscreen, along with a few others. Customers can contact Johnson & Johnson's customer care line for a refund. Singer Britney Spears earns a small win in her public legal battle. She tearfully pleaded for the court to oust her father immediately from the role of controlling her business affairs. On Wednesday, pop star Britney Spears won the right to choose her own attorney to help her end a 13-year-long conservatorship. Her father, Jamie Spears, has controlled most of her assets since 2008 after Britney had a public mental health breakdown. Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Brenda Penny approved former federal prosecutor Matthew Rosengart to represent Spears moving forward after her court-appointed Britney's uh, after her court-appointed attorney stepped down last week. Rosengart, who was represented who has represented Hollywood stars like Sean Penn and Steven Spielberg, said his goal was to end the conservatorship. Jamie Spears's attorney on Wednesday said that many of the Spears complaints were not valid. The next hearing in the case is set for late September. Former NFL star Richard Sherman has been arrested. That's after authorities said he crashed into a suburban Seattle construction zone, tried to break into his in-laws' home, and resisted arrest. Our dispatch center received a 911 call reporting a possible uh, impaired driver that had entered a construction, closed construction zone. 
when the vehicle was located, it was uh, had pretty significant uh, driver side damage from an impact with the barrier as it left the uh, construction zone. So this morning at approximately 1.49 a.m., Redmond police received a 911 call from the occupants in the 18100 block of Northeast 30th Street, indicating a family member who did not reside at the residence uh, was trying to break in. Officers responded and made contact with Richard Sherman. Officers attempted to de-escalate the situation and gain voluntary compliance from Mr. Sherman. Mr. Sherman physically resisted officers' efforts to take him into custody, and a Redmond police canine was deployed to assist in gaining control of Mr. Sherman. Sherman was left with minor cuts to his lower leg and treated at a hospital before being taken to the downtown Seattle jail. While he was in the hospital, troopers obtained a warrant for a blood draw to test for intoxicants. The results are pending. Sherman became a Seattle sports legend during seven seasons with the Seahawks. The cornerback was a star in their run to a 2014 Super Bowl victory. Since then, he left the Seahawks and played three seasons with the 49ers. The 33-year-old is now a free agent. Arizona firefighters rescued a father and his two daughters from a terrifying scene Wednesday. The family became stranded when fast-moving floodwaters from a powerful storm sw swept their vehicle away. As you can see, the situation was so dire, they had to move to the roof of their vehicle. The Golder Ranch Fire Department says no one was hurt in the incident. It was just one of several rescues in the area from vehicles that got stuck in water on roadways. The storm also caused power outages, and one home was struck by lightning. The oppressive heat mixed with an ongoing drought is leaving some in California without running water. Wells are now high and dry, meaning people are unable to shower, brush their teeth, or cook. Here's more. There's seven of us living in the house, and we've had no water for a month now. For the Boylan family, the drought is hitting home. You still walk over to brush your teeth and turn on the faucet, and then you realize, oh yeah, there's no water. The lack of running water makes the simplest of routines challenging, especially as temperatures rise above 100 degrees. Our neighbor who has a house across the street with no one living in it said we can use his hose out front to fill our water bucket. All this because the well at their Clovis, California home literally ran dry. The result of years of underwhelming precipitation in the region. It went from being sufficient to being gone overnight. Well, now you can move this because there's no water in it. By a stroke of luck, the Boylans came across self-help enterprises, which helps residents get the water they need. It's a 2,500 gallon tank and then we haul water weekly and they can resume normal household activities. The Boylans aren't the only ones in this predicament. Across the state's Central Valley, wells are drying out, drawing up demand. The family is on a nine month waiting list to drill a new, deeper well. In fact, California just recorded its lowest rainfall year since records began in 1895. And it's not just homeowners. Even towns are being forced to drill deeper to find water. We all just expect to go up to the faucet, turn it on, and there's water. But when there isn't, it's a shock. Frank Galavez lives in Teveston. He says in early June, 700 or so residents were left high and dry for about two weeks after the town's well failed. Now they are relying on these four massive above-ground tanks that get refilled daily. Each holds 10,000 gallons of crucial H2O in a district where only one of three wells is now functional. A quarter of America's food is produced here in the Central Valley, with 80% of California's water supply going to agriculture. So with the lack of rain, growers are relying heavily on groundwater pumped from across the region to irrigate their crops. While some worry that increased pumping could impact smaller wells, Galavez says the giant agriculture machine is a necessity. We have to have the food. We have to have the work for our farm workers. As for Laurel Boylan, she was awash with emotions as the plumbers finally arrived with her tanks. The tank installer called this morning. I busted out bawling. You telling me I'm going to have it today just was a little overwhelming. You take running water for granted. I'll never take it for granted again. Coming up July 20th marks the 22nd anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party's persecution against the spiritual group Falun Gong. A practitioner living in Michigan shares his 14 years of persecution. You may have heard of the Red Sea, but have you seen a red river? Residents in a Chinese town are surprised to find a local river turning red. 
That and more here on NTD News. A software engineer living in Michigan recounts his horrific experiences before he fled from China. He was jailed and tortured for over eight years simply because of his beliefs. Here are the details. I was born in Shandong province, China, 1973. In 1996, I got my bachelor's degree and was recommended to pursue a doctorate at Tsinghua University. The next year, I started practicing Falun Gong. During the International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington, D.C., Wei Yu Wang shared his experience in China practicing Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa. It's a spiritual discipline and meditation practice based on the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. It was first introduced to the public in 1992, and by 1999, there were an estimated 70 million to 100 million practitioners in China. As the number of adherents grew, party leader Jiang Zemin began brutally persecuting Falun Gong practitioners on July 20, 1999. It's widely believed Zhang felt threatened that there were more people practicing Falun Gong than there were members of the party. After that, Wang was publicly condemned by his classmates under the instruction of a party leader at Tsinghua University. I still cannot forget the face of my close friend who stood up and threatened me. If you keep your belief in Falun Gong, I will stab you to death. I was very astonished at that time. I had no idea that propaganda could change a person in such a dramatic way. Wang refused to give up his beliefs and was therefore forced to suspend his schooling twice and give up his doctorate degree. In August 2002, he was kidnapped by CCP security personnel on the streets. They knocked my glasses off my face and then stabbed on my head. This violence surprised the passersby and some of them stopped and watched. The assailants told the pedestrians that I was a thief. I shot it back. I am a Falun Gong practitioner, not a thief. They were so scared at my words, they quickly covered my mouth and stopped me into a car. Wang was sent to a secret location that detained only Falun Gong practitioners, called the Legal Training Center. There he was beaten and tortured non-stop from 6 p.m. until 5 a.m. the next day. I was shocked all over my body including all 10 fingertips, and they even pierced two electrodes into my back. The authorities would jump to smash my head with their elbows, called me a counter-revolutionist, and shot it with glee to scorch every, skin, every inch of skin. Wang was jailed and tortured for six months before he was sent to a detention center in Beijing. In 2004, he was sentenced to eight years of prison, and sent to Changjin Prison in Tianjin. There, some prisoners who were murderers and drug traffickers were chosen to monitor Falun Gong practitioners 24 hours a day. We were forced to labor outside, planting radishes, weeding, digging, or do factory work like rabbing candies, making paper muffin cups, or sports balls like volleyballs. While sewing those balls by hand, a practitioner pierced his eyeball with the iron crochet by accident because we didn't have any protective equipment. After 14 years of suffering under the CCP's persecution, Wang fled the country for the United States. But sadly, many of his fellow practitioners at Tsinghua University are still being persecuted for their faith. Wang said there is one thing that the CCP is afraid of, the voices of justice. He says that's because darkness is always afraid of being exposed to the light. A Chinese online influencer is making false claims about the recent protests in Cuba. The influencer says instead of protesting against communism, the Cubans are showing support for the communist regime. NTD's Tiffany Meyer brings us more on the story. As Cuban citizens take to the streets in protests against the communist regime, a famous Chinese influencer is making false claims about their motives, claiming their actions instead show support for communist rule. Chinese netizen Gu Yan Mu Chen has more than 6 million followers on Chinese social media platform Weibo. The microblogging website is often considered China's version of Twitter. 
Mu Chen is known for her staunch support of Chinese authorities and her anti-American stance. She also writes articles published by state-run media outlets like the Global Times. On Monday, she posted a video showing Cuban protesters. Along with the caption, the Cubans are on the street in support of their president. They are protesting against the far-right opposition agents who are bought off by the U.S. and who try to destroy social stability. But a Chinese dissident disagreed, commenting on Twitter that it was clearly the people of 32 cities taking to the streets, protesting against the dictatorship of the Cuban Communist Party. But when the news came to the CCP, they turned it into a demonstration of the people in support of the Cuban Communist Party and against the United States. Adding that how shameless does someone have to be to lie through their teeth like that? A rare sight, a river in central China has turned red after rainfall. It happened in the city of Enshi in Hubei province on Monday. Locals were surprised and filmed it. The red water was seen running down from a mountain. Local media also reported on the rare sight, and relevant authorities are investigating. The day before, heavy rain hit the city, and authorities issued a red warning. Still to come, a group of young people in Italy are saving their local economy by restoring old, abandoned historic buildings into hostels. The project is helping create jobs for young people in the area. And people struggle to hold on to their pandemic pets who have developed behavioral problems. In Germany, some are bringing them back to shelters. Find out more in just a minute. When the game's over and it's time to go home, sometimes your car has other plans. That's why I drive with CarShield. As expensive as car repairs can be, I wanted the best defense around. And with CarShield's administrators, they make sure that you don't get stuck with expensive car repairs like this. Did I forget to mention that with CarShield's network, I also get 24-7 roadside assistance, towing, and rental car reimbursement included. That's peace of mind every driver needs. I saved close to $9,000. If it wasn't for car shields, I wouldn't have my car. I got to tell you, it's quite a relief not to worry about expensive car breakdowns anymore. And with car shields administrators, you can choose your favorite mechanic or dealer to do the work. Plus, it's easier than ever to get America's favorite car protection. There's no long-term contracts, and coverage is affordable for every wallet size. If I didn't have car shield, I would have been out of pocket $7,000. As a parent of three, I couldn't have that. I trust CarShield administrators because they paid my claim. Talk about MVP protection for less than the cost of a ball game. Take it from me, the boomer. Nobody wants to go through the headache of an expensive car breakdown on their own. If you're driving without a warranty, you have to call CarShield. Yeah, you do. So do yourself and your car a favor. Call CarShield. They're your best line of defense against expensive breakdowns. CarShield administrators paid almost $4,000 for my repairs. CarShield is wonderful. They saved me $1,300. With CarShield, I saved $4,100 on my first repair. Over a million happy drivers couldn't be wrong. Call CarShield now. Protect yourself now against expensive auto repair bills. Call CarShield for a free and instant protection plan quote. Once your car breaks down, it's too late. Call 1-800-862-2990. That's 1-800-862-2990. 1-800-862-2990. A small Italian village is suffering with an aging population and high unemployment rates among young people. To help the problem, a group of young Italians proposed to convert abandoned historic buildings into hospitals into hostels, aiming to save the local economy and prevent the region from being deserted. Nestled between the mountains in central Italy, an old sleepy hamlet remains. Ten young people there, all aged 35 or younger, are working to make a difference in the community. The group launched a project aiming to turn these once abandoned stalls into a hostel and a local restaurant. The project has been dubbed the Young Itinerary. It's being overseen by the local government's Delegate for Youth Policy. In Italy, there are more than 700,000 buildings, often public ones, that are abandoned. 
On the other side, there is a generation of young people who need places to meet, to interact, study, enjoy culture, do business, and above all, places where we can become leaders of cultural, social, economic, and touristic development of our territory. Italy is currently suffering a huge demographic crisis. According to Eurostat figures, the country has the world's second oldest population and one of the EU's lowest fertility rates in 2019. The conditions are prompting young Italians to desert their rural areas and even the country altogether. The Young Itinerary Project is one of the first major attempts to fight the trend. All employees in the newly converted hostel come from a small village with less than 2,000 inhabitants. Above all, we are giving the opportunity to these young people to learn professions that these days have been forgotten. And today it is more difficult for young people to find this kind of work. The hostel consists of six renovated stone buildings and flower-dotted paths. While the top-notch food served there attracts a mix of clients, a central courtyard with huge umbrellas also delights guests with mountain views. It's a great way to give value to the Lazio region, which is not very well known. And above all, the fact that it is a project coming from young people makes it absolutely interesting to promote. The youth group joined a competition organized by the local government to win the funds for the renovation, an estimated $7 million. A total of 16 abandoned castles and monasteries are located in the area. As part of the plan, they'll all be transformed into hotels or cultural centers. Animal shelters in Germany are reaching full capacity as people return pandemic pets that have since developed behavioral problems. Here's NTD's Andrew Thomas with the report. During the pandemic, many people longed for a furry companion. But for a lot of new pet owners, the responsibility now seems too great, and some are trying to get rid of them. Animal shelters in Germany are struggling to cope with the flood of pets being returned. These are families that had a lot of time, who were at home. There were many children whose dream to own a dog became true, and they got a dog from somewhere. They either bought them on the internet, and often, these dogs were illegal imports. Dog training schools shut down at the height of the pandemic. So the pets became a burden once they started showing behavioral issues. There were many sick animals and there were also dogs with behavioral problems due to the way they were raised. And then all the dog schools were closed. That means the families couldn't get any help when they needed it. Hebrera's animal shelter is reaching its limits, especially when it comes to taking in difficult dogs. The chances of finding new homes for animals there aren't good. For those with behavioral problems, that chance is close to zero. The problem is that many people want to return their dogs because the animals are incompatible and very difficult to handle, and there is simply no more room for difficult dogs. For animal shelters, this often means they end up taking in the dogs for good, without financial support. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. Next up, fans come out to greet Simone Biles and Team USA Gymnastics before they head to Tokyo. Biles speaks about what she expects in the upcoming Olympic Games. And Tokyo's press center and Olympic Village are welcoming journalists and athletes from around the world. Their official opening marked the 10-day lead-up to the Tokyo 2020 opening ceremony. That and more here on NCD News. The 2020 Olympics are just around the corner. Ten days ahead of the opening ceremony, organizers officially opened Tokyo's press center to journalists. The same day, the Olympic Village began welcoming athletes from all over the world. The main press center for the Tokyo Olympics officially opened to journalists on Tuesday, marking the 10-day lead-up to the start of the Games. Up to 6,000 media personnel from around the world will work there, though all are required to undergo security and temperature checks prior to entering a hall. They're doing everything they can to guard against uh, COVID getting out any further than it already is. So uh, I, I feel entirely safe. Known as the Tokyo Big Site, the building is located on the Tokyo Bay waterfront. It's Japan's largest international exhibition center. Rows of working stations outfitted with transparent dividers have been set up inside. Okay, we know that maybe the protocols and the, the, the situation itself made some limits. But we understand this because the safety is more important. And even with this, we are very excited to, to have this experience of being in an Olympic Games. 
And on the same day, team members from all countries arrived at the Olympic Village. The village bubble will house more than 11,000 athletes and mandate strict rules for virus prevention. Athletes will leave the area only for training and competitions. Daily virus testing and masks are also required. Restrictions include a ban on singing and chanting during events. Tokyo entered a new state of emergency on Monday amid a rise in CCP virus cases. The games will run from July 23rd to August 8th following a year delay. Gymnastics star Simone Biles spoke to fans and gave her final thoughts before boarding a flight to Tokyo for the Olympic Games. After the extra year of long waiting, it feels surreal that we're finally in the airport about to head to Tokyo. I'm super excited, ready to represent Team USA to the best of my ability. Yeah, it's going to be really tough, I think, only because um, I've never competed without a crowd. I've never competed without my family there, so it'll be very different. Well, I'm very much a veteran. I'm not a rookie anymore, so it'll be very different. I kind of guide the girls through the way because for all of them, it will be their first Olympics. It'll be different, but it'll be worth it, and at least we get the opportunity to still compete at Olympic Games. This will be the second Olympics for Viles. The 24-year-old won four gold medals and one bronze at the 2016 Rio Games. She seeks to become the first woman in more than a half century to repeat as an Olympic champion. But CCP virus restrictions in Tokyo won't let fans and family members of athletes attend, so it remains to be seen if that will impact her performance. Representing one's nation at the Olympics is, of course, a great honor for every athlete, but being flag bearer requires even more coolness. Here's NTD's Arian Pastar. This year's flag bearers for Team USA might be the coolest ever. Tokyo can get pretty hot and humid, and the yet unannounced flag bearers are going to have a special jacket for that occasion. So we've added a cooling technology to the jacket. So just as it looks classic, it's infused with a modern technology that's totally groundbreaking. The technology disperses heat from the skin through a fan device at the back of the neck. There's a lightweight personal battery controller stashed inside. It's similar to how large computers are kept cool. I know that this jack is working, it's really cooling me because when I push this button, I feel the air conditioner or the fan in my back and I can feel actually the breeze. The rest of Team USA will walk in tailored navy blazers made of American grown wool. On TV you see the opening ceremonies is like a, a one hour ordeal, but it's really like an eight, nine hour thing. Um, so you just want to feel comfortable and make sure you feel good and while you're comfortable. Ralph Lauren makes the outfits for Team USA, but some have criticized the company during the London Games for providing uniforms made in China. Arian Pastar, NTD News. Now we continue our segment on health and wellness. Did you know that you can eat and drink yourself into a better state of mind? Try out these healthy choices. Welcome to Strong Mind and Body, I'm Gina Marie. So many of us operate in high gear most of the day. We put out small fires and large ones. We juggle schedules, we deal with traffic, and that is just the beginning. Even when we aren't rushing along, levels of the stress hormone cortisol can remain elevated. We need to return to a state of tranquility. High cortisol levels raise the risk of several health dangers. One is that it triggers food cravings, which can send us dashing to the pantry for chips and cookies. High cortisol can translate into more belly fat, which in turn raises the risk of diabetes and heart disease. Certain foods can help restore calm in your life. These are balancing foods that can assist in relieving stress and restoring internal equilibrium. Eat these foods as often as possible and find some creative ways to enjoy them even more. Let's start with asparagus. These noble stalks are rich in folate. A study of over 2,500 adults was conducted. They found that people who ate foods high in folate had a lower risk of depression. Avocados. Avocados have more folate than any other fruit. They also contain healthy fats and potent antioxidants. Try a few slices in a salad. Leafy greens are also calming, or you can try it in a sandwich. Berries. 
Berries are a super source of vitamin C. They have a long history as a stress reducer. In one study, 500 milligrams of vitamin C was found to reduce anxiety in high school students. Another study found that vitamin C was effective in reducing anxiety in people with type 2 diabetes. Chamomile tea. This herbal tea is a tried, true and tested way to help achieve a sense of calm. In one study, 57 adults with anxiety were given chamomile. There was a clear anti-anxiety benefit seen in those who took the chamomile. Next is dark chocolate. It turns out that dark chocolate is more than a comfort food. It can boost serotonin levels as well as reduce blood pressure. It also provides a significant amount of antioxidants. Next on the list is fermented foods. A healthy gut can mean a much healthier and calmer brain. That's because there's a direct connection between these two regions of the the body. Fermented foods that contain reliable sources of beneficial bacteria, in other words probiotics, can have a direct impact on brain chemistry. Be sure to choose foods with verifiable amounts of probiotics. It's even better if you can make your own fermented veggies, kefir, sauerkraut and yogurt. Next, let's not forget leafy greens. Kale, spinach, Swiss chard, mustard greens and other leafy greens are excellent sources of folate and magnesium. These are both calming nutrients. Oatmeal. One might say that oatmeal reduces stress in two ways. First, it's inexpensive and easy to make so you don't need to spend a lot of prep time. Second, it prompts your brain to make the calming neurotransmitter called serotonin. And last but not least, nuts and seeds. Chia, sunflower, flax, hemp and sesame seeds provide lots of magnesium. Magnesium is a precursor for serotonin. Research also shows that a magnesium deficiency is associated with anxiety, depression and panic attacks. Thanks for watching. My team and I are honored to be your source for the news. In New York City, I'm Kevin Hogan. We have a new channel. Subscribe to us on YouTube at NTD News. Get the highlights of our news broadcast and the most important headlines that we curate especially for you. Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source.